today's lesson, we're going to take a look at simplifying fractions using GCF or the greatest common factor. And we're going to try that with four different fractions. First one would be 5 tenths, second, 9 thirty-sixths, third, 4 sixteenths, and the last one, number four, would be 15 twentieths. And we're really going to come up with equivalent fractions. We talked about equivalent fractions in our previous post. So really, um, when you talk about simplifying fractions or putting fractions in lowest terms uh, or simplest form, it all means the same thing. You're coming up with an equivalent fraction. So again, an equivalent fraction is a fra are fractions that represent the same part of a whole or a set. So let's try the first one. If you're you're watching at home, you want to practice these, go ahead and write them down and pause the video. Here we go. Let's take a look at the first one. Now, like I said, you're going to use greatest common factor to, and your knowledge of fractions to really reduce this fraction into simplest form. Now, in order to find the greatest common factor, or the GCF, we need to take a look at the factors of both the numerator and the denominator. And in this case, our numerator is 5, and our denominator is 10. And when you think about factors, you're probably thinking, okay, multiplication. Well, you're right. When you talk about factors, those are the numbers you multiply together to get your product or your answer. So in this case, we want to find the numbers that you multiply together that equal 5. We'll do those first. And then the numbers you multiply together that equal 10. So the first one, let's list them. We've got 1. We always start off with 1 because 1 is a factor of every, uh, every number. So we've got uh, 1 times 5. That would equal 5. You can see that. 1 times 5. And then we go, we'll go to the next number, 2. Is there anything times 2 that equals 5? No. Nope. There isn't anything. 3? Three, 3 times? No. There's not a, a whole number you can multiply 3 by to get 5. 4? Same story. So, if you look at the factors for 5, there's only 2. And it is a prime number, so its only factors are 1 and itself. So 1 times 5 are the only factors. Now, let's drop down and take a look at 10. Again, we'll start with 1 times the number we're dealing with, that's 10. 1 times 10 equals 10. Now uh, we'll take a look at 2. What You're probably thinking to yourself, well, I know that, that's 2 times 5 equals 10. Well, you'd be right. That's exactly right. So I like to put these arcs in here, and I connect the two factors. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 5 is 10. Uh, 3, no, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. That doesn't work. Three, 4 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, that doesn't work. So here we are, we have 4 factors for 10. Now, if you think about greatest common factors, well, in this case, I mean, you have 1 and 1 are common factors, but that's not doesn't have the greatest value. But if you look at, over here, we have 5 and 5. So 5 is a factor of both 5 and it's a factor of 10. So our greatest common factor for the 5 and 10 is 5. Okay, well that's fine and good, but what do you do with it to reduce this fraction? Well, that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to move this down so we have some more room to work with. And again, we're really trying to find an equivalent fraction to 5 tenths in the lowest um, form of it, or the simplest form. So we're going to divide by our GCF, which is 5. And since it's a fraction, we'll divide the numerator by 5. What you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator. You've probably heard, that, heard me say that a million times in all our posts in uh, multiplying fractions, etc., and then dividing. But well, anyways, you set up a new fraction. We've got 5 divided by 5. And you're probably thinking, Mr. Marina can know that it's 1. And you'd be right. Because any number divided by itself equals 1. Little identity going on there. 10 divided by 5 equals 
2, right. So if you multiply 2 times 5, it equals 10. That's a good way to check. And I'm going to do the reverse here. Use the inverse operation to check. 1 times 5 equals 5. So we're all set there. So we've got our fraction in lowest terms or simplest form would be 1 half. 1 half is the answer to that one. Moving on. The next one, we have 936, and we're going to find our GCF. And we'll take a look at the factors of our numerator 9 and our denominator 6. Uh, 36, I mean. All right, so there we go. We've got 9 and 36. We're going to find the factors of 9, first of all. So we've got 1 times 9. And then we've got, well, 2 doesn't work. It's 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10. That doesn't hit the mark there. So now we're going to look at 3. 3 times, oh, I bet you're thinking this, too. 3 times 3 equals 9. Now, when you're listing factors, I know I did the arcs between them before. When you're listing factors, you only have to list uh, the 3 one time. And if you wanted to, you can list it twice. But if it's listed only once, then you multiply it by itself. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 times 9 is 9. Let's move on to 36. All right, well, again, we start with 1 and the number that we're dealing with, which is 36. Simply because 1 times 36 equals 36. Then we go 2. Okay. Well, you might not know offhand 2 times what equals 36. So, I know that the digit in the 1's place is a 6. And anything ending with uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 must be an even number. And even numbers are always divisible by 2. And if you don't know that, I suggest um, you... Write a little work on the side there. We've got 36 divided by 2. So we're dealing with this 2 over here. 2 goes into 3 once. 1 times 2 is 2. Subtract. You get 1. If I'm going too fast for you, please feel free to freeze this or uh, pause the video and catch up. Uh, so you bring down 6. Now we're dealing with 2 going into 16. That's 8 times. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract, and we have nothing left, nothing to bring down, so our answer is 18. So now we've got his factors, 2 and 18. How about 3? Hmm. Well, I know 3 goes into 3, and 3 goes into 6 and 36. Let's try that out, too. All right, let's show our work over here. We've got 36 divided by... What was it? We're dealing with three. Let's see if that will list it here. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. So you've got to try it out, though. Three goes into 36. Well, I know three goes into three one time. One times three is three. Subtract. Get zero. Bring down the six. Three goes into six twice. Ah. Two times three is six. Subtract. Get nothing. So your answer there, or your other factor in this case, <laughs> The quotient there is 12. So we've got 3 times 12 equals 36. And I think we might have to move that over a little bit. So if you're using a pencil, good for you. Okay, oh, that's a little bunched up there. Good thing you can do with uh, software these days. Okay, so now we've got 3 taken care of. Now about 4. 4 times, ah, I know, 4 times 9 equals 36. Look at that. We've got factors of, let's join them together. We've got 1 times 36. This helps to get organized here. We've got 2 times 18 equals 36. 3 times 12 equals 36. And 4 times 9 equals 36. 5? Well, no. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 8 40. Nope, none of those match. Uh, 6. Oh, boy, look at that. Yes. You're probably thinking to yourself, 6 times 6 equals 36. Wow, look at all the factors for 36. 
So we've got 6 times 6 equals 36. And again, since you'll, you have 6 times itself, you really only have to list it once. So 6 times 6 equals 36 there. Uh, 7, no, because 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 6 is 42. 8, no, 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40, so that doesn't match. And then we're back to 9. So we are done finding the factors of 36. So now, the GCF, we have to find the greatest common factor. So let's see. We have 36 on the right there. Then we've got a 9 up top. And if I see that, there's a 9 up there and a 9 below. A 3 here. Nope. That doesn't match up. I mean, it, it, it's a common factor, but is it the greatest one? No, 9 is greater. So then we're, we always have 1. So, oh, look at that. I mean, 1 is the same here and there. But 9 is the greatest common factor. So I'm going to write that 9 right up here. Our greatest common factor is 9. So as you can see, some of these take a little bit more work than others. But if you go through these steps, you'll be just fine. You always divide by that greatest common factor. So, in, you know, if you looked at this problem and you knew that 9 goes into 36 four times, you could probably figure that out yourself. But in order to go through these steps to get an equivalent fraction, you have to find that GCF. So 9 divided by the GCF of 9. Then we have the denominator divided by 9. And we're going to come up with an equivalent fraction in simplest form. And it is, let's see, 9 divided by 9 is 1. And 36 divided by 9 is 4. And you have 1 fourth, and that is in the lowest terms. And you can't get any lower because if you look at the factors of 1 and 4, uh, the factors for 1 are 1 times 1. And the factors for 4 are 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So the greatest factor that was common between those, or the only common factor, of 1 to 4 is 1, so it stays the same. Kind of wordy explanation, but that's what it is. Uh, so we have 1 fourth as your answer. And we'll go on to the third problem. Find our G, C, oops, G, C, F. Now we'll list our factors for 4. And remind, reminder not to be confused with LCM. That's we're looking for multiples before when we were working with adding and subtracting fractions. That was in another post. So don't confuse multiples and factors. A lot of times we tend to do that. So remember, factors are numbers you multiply together to get a product. In this case, we want the factors to equal 4 up top and then 16 below. So we'll start with 1 like we've done before. 1 times 4 is 4. Then we have 2 times itself equals 4. Okay, so our factors for 4, let's see, 3 doesn't work, and then we're back to 4. So our factors for 4 are 1, 2, 4. Let's connect them together. And then, like I said, you only have to list 2 one time, so it's 2 times 2 equals 4. And now we'll go down to 16. Start with 1. And itself, 16. Uh, 1 times 16 equals 16. 2 times 8. I bet you were thinking that. Good for you. And we have 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 5 is 15. Nope, that doesn't work. 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. And look at that. 4 times itself equals 16. Go to 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. 6 doesn't work. 7, no. And we're back to 8. So there you go. You have all the factors for 16. 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times itself. Looks like a little green olive there. Hmm. Anyways, so if you look at that, now you've got to find the greatest common factor here. I'm going to start with the number with the fewest factors. That's 4. And I'll look at the greatest factor there. 4. Oh, yeah. Look, we've got a 4 up top. Uh, 4 is a factor of 4. 
and 4 is a factor of 16. And if 2 is similar, that's a common factor, and 1 is also a common factor for all of them, but the greatest common factor here is 4. So like I said, to find the uh, simplest form, you're going to divide by GCF. That's really the rule for what we're doing here. So I'm going to move 4 sixteenths down, have a little work space, and let's see, we'll set it equal to another fraction, dividing by the GCF, which was 4. 4 divided by 4 equals, nope, <laughs> 4 divided by 4 equals 1. And 16 divided by 4 equals 4. It's 4 times 4 is 16. 1 times 4 is 4, and you are done. So that reduced down to 1 fourth as well. Now let's go on to the last one. We got 15 twentieths, and we're finding our GCF. List our factors for these. Numerator 15, denominator 20, and we'll list the factors. 1 times 15, you're probably getting good at this, I'll just kind of run through this. Uh, 2 times, no, that, that doesn't work. 3 times 5 is 15. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16, no, and we're back to 5. So that's all the factors for 15. We've got 1 times 5. I'm sorry, 1 times 15, and 3 times 5, equaling 15. Down below, we've got 20 to deal with. All right, so we have 1 times the number itself, which is 20 we're dealing with. 1 times 20 equals 20. 2, yep. 20 is an even number, so 2 times 10 will equal 20. Uh, 3, no, that really doesn't work. 3 times... 6 is 18, 3 times 7 is 21, that doesn't work. 4, oh yeah, 4 times 5 equals 20. Uh, 5, yes, 5 times 4, and we're done. So look at that, there's all the factors for 20. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5, and they all equal 20. Now we have to find the greatest common kind of factor. I'll scan through this, starting with my number with the fewest factors. Uh, let's see, 15 I see above, but I don't see down below. So that's not it. Uh, 5 I see above, and 5 I see below. And look at that. You've got your GCF equals 5. And remember to divide by GCF. So like, again, our GCF was 5. So we'll divide, actually let me use a different color marker there. GCF divided by 5, both numerator and denominator, you have to do the same. And really, essentially, again, you are dividing by, it's like saying 5 over 5, which is 1. So you're not changing the value of the fraction. So it's an equivalent fraction we're making in simplest form. And 15 divided by 5. If you don't know what that is, you could say 5 times what equals 15. Yeah. Three, you're right. If you're thinking three, you are, you are correct. Now the next one, 20 divided by 5. Also, you could think in reverse. 5 times what equals 20? And yes, 4 would be correct. Good for you if you were thinking that. And there we have reduced 15 twentieths into the lowest term, simplest form. And you've got 3 fourths. And that is simplifying fractions by using greatest common factor. Thanks for checking out Mr. Marinick's EduBlog, and we'll see you again next time.